Hi, everyone. <laughs> welcome to our Visiting Critic Lecture Series at Anderson Ranch. I want to welcome everybody in person and our virtual participants as well. I'm Liz Farrell, director of our Artists in Residence program. Before we begin, please silence your cell phones. To begin, Anderson Ranch would like to acknowledge that our campus resides on the traditional ancestral territory of the Ute people, who called the Roaring Fork Valley and beyond home for over 800 years. It is an honor and a pleasure to introduce Freddie Waman Malki. Freddie excels in both classical wood carving as well as fabricating contemporary pieces. In 2021, Freddie was selected to create an ambitious sculptural series of public art in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Engaged in this multi-year project, he seeks to stimulate dialogue between sculpture and community. Freddie's sculpture, together, became part of the downtown Erie Sculpture Walk. And in 2019, Freddie was invited to be part of the World Wood Day celebration in Graz, Austria. Freddie teaches classical and sculptural carving classes in institutions, including the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship in Maine, Anderson Ranch Arts Center in Colorado, and Shaker Egg Workshops in Tennessee. Freddie's work has been shown individually and collectively in Austria, Germany, Peru, and the United States. So please join me in welcoming Freddie. Hello, hello, good evening. Thank you so much for being here. And I would like to thank, thanks so much, uh, Liz, for inviting me. And thanks, uh, Anderson Ranch, for having me again in the winter. It's an amazing place, and it's an enjoyable uh, space for making art. Um, I want to talk about my art. Uh, but uh, I want also to talk where I, I am come from and what influenced my art through the years. So I was born in Ayacucho, Peru uh, in 1980. And coincidentally, also 1980 was where the nightmare uh, is started in the Peruvian Andes, and especially in my hometown. Ayacucho, where the Shining Path um, uh, revolutionary um, movement started um, and then killing people who were not agree with their uh, beliefs and the <sighs> terrible response also from the government uh, killing um, uh, people, especially mostly peasants. And this is my some of the views of my hometown. When I was a kid, I started to hear that there are five seasons in the Andes. Spring, ar uh, summer, autumn, and winter, and one more. which is killing people. And I never hear, oh, I, I never knew what it, it mean when I was a kid. Until I start to understand that there were like people who were disappearing in my city and kidnapping from the Shining Path movement and also from the uh, Peruvian government through the army and the policemen. Um, this shirt has been found in a mass grave uh, in, the, in one of the um, uh, military places. And, and they were like rest from uh, people who were disappearing. They might be, you know, bored 
alive. And um, <clears throat> this piece I created in, uh, when I was studying fine arts uh, in my city Ayacucho. And it basically, it's, it's like I'm trying to replicate what I feel as a kid growing, uh, hearing those things that were happening in my city. Those were uh, from the same series. Uh, they were called uh, Made in Peru, or Peruvian product. Uh, I integrated um, these, the, the heads or the faces are um, sweet bread. Those are traditional made sweet breads made during the All Souls Day. And uh, I, I did it myself uh, with the help of a master baker. And we took it to the, to the, to the bakery and it basically is burned and, and making look like as a, like as a face uh, of a, especially of women who were the most like damaged during these uh, times because they were like abused sexually and disappeared and during this time and for example this is called por soplones which means by a stitch that meant that if you were not with the military or if you were not with the uh, shining path movement, you basically were against one of them and you were like enemy. <laughs> and this is the same, like represents like the face of a girl uh, that she's, she was only 13 years old. Uh, this is from the same series. And this, I did a research, uh, the whole series of these pieces, uh, based on the um, Commission of the Truth and Reconciliation created in 2001 in Peru to, invest, to research about what happened really during those times in Peru. So the conclusion was there were more than 69 uh, thousand people killed and uh, during 1980 and 2000 and mostly of those uh, wounded people were in my city unfortunately and this is also part of the same series um, those are uh, people who uh, it's interesting my hometown it's it's uh, pretty small, um, and I basically know some of them, or I knew some of them. Some of them were my my teachers. Some of them were like in the elementary school, and some of them were my neighbors who were looking for their family uh, who disappeared uh, during those times. Um, this is a different uh, subject, a different um, art, uh, piece of art that I did, uh, and it's related also with uh, dyed. Uh, I like to research about um, death. That was some of my main subjects during uh, when I was in Peru uh, researching a lot of this. And this is about, uh, it's called Wawa Pampai or funeral, infant's funeral, and where uh, this, uh, uh, this guy who is the um, uh, godfather, he is carrying that death baby uh, on a chair, like a, it's a kind of a throne, and, and they are taken to the uh, cemetery. It's a pretty like traditional uh, burial ceremony that goes in the like pretty remote areas in the Peruvian Andes. Uh, this was part of a documentary. The baby, uh, it's 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 in the chair, 
um uh of course the coughing it's 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 there also and they are resting it's taking a break and chewing a uh, coca leaf just to take uh you know a rest they are uh leaving the village uh where they live and going to the cemetery you know you can see it's 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 the whole community basically participates in this uh, in this event, and what happens in the in the end is uh, when a baby dies, it's 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 just a goodbye. It's not like the baby is going forever. The baby is still there, but it, but in a different context. It's accompanying the family. This town it's uh, loca located in the um, uh, in the heart of the of my city. Uh, it's called Cucharcas, and uh, as you could uh, see, this huge building. Uh, this is an old church uh, that is built like in the middle of of uh, nowhere. Uh, it's like m maybe like two hundred houses in this town, and but this church is like the most amazing place where uh, I did a research about a uh, pilgrimage that goes uh, into different cities that started in that, in that town and goes to Lima, for example, the capital of Peru, and they visit the families, they visit different homes, and they travel for months. And in the month of September, they come again to the, to the town and like, Walking all over, like you know, the the, the cliffs, uh, the the mountains, and crossing rivers, and and co go back again into the town. And I did this photo documentary accompanying the the, the pilgrimage for uh, five months, living with them during that time. This is basically what it is inside the, the this uh, box, wooden box. Uh, it's the Madonna with, you know, the paraphernalia inside of it. And those are like, like gifts that people give to this image as a result of uh, it has been made a miracle for, for this person or for this family. And that is how it ended, ended up this pilgrimage and a huge uh, celebration. Uh, it's a... Uh, um, uh, like that duality between uh, the um, Christian and ancient Peruvian uh, rituals. Um, I also did uh, starting uh, working here uh, in that church because that was in a restoration project, and uh, this is me um, here, um, um, starting with a team of. Uh, um, are conservators. We were working for five years over there, like basically um, carving from scratch uh, the whole altarpiece, uh, carving in um, uh, cedar and then gilding uh, the whole piece, the whole altarpiece. So that is the altarpiece that we carved, like piece by piece. And some of the uh, remain original pieces uh, also we we used, like. Like this, for example, it's it's totally like not useful piece of wood, and we, you know, you see here like new pieces that have been carving, and and those missing pieces what we are have to replace. So I was trained in the whole. Um, 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 craftsmen of uh, restoring art pieces from the 16th, uh, 17th, 18th century. This is an image, uh, uh, a sculpture that it was uh, uh, damaged and we were doing, like filling those pieces that were missing and then applying gold leaf and then scratching to make, you know, the patterns that were missing over there. Um, I started my training when I was a kid, since I was a kid at uh, nine years old uh, with uh, master carvers in my city, Ayacucho. And, 
this is like um I took many years ago when I came back uh, to Peru and I found still this piece that I carved for a client uh, with the help of my masters. And this was some of my first pieces at the age of maybe, I don't know, 14, 15 maybe. And this is also from the same uh, uh, period of time. Uh, yeah, 14, 15 maybe I was. Um, the 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 wood is um, uh, mm, mahogany, Peruvian mahogany, and it's uh, you know that style is like a type of French uh, rococo uh, table with a pretty you know. Uh, uh, so in my practice, um, tools are pretty important. Uh, without uh, good uh, carving tools and without a good selection of carving tools, it's it's impossible to be done anything uh, uh, in my in my profession. So I have a bunch of uh, different sizes and shapes of uh, carving tools, and to uh, I think I have more than 200 uh, tools to be done like different uh, types of pieces and. Uh, like this is how I started, um, uh, like for example, this is for a restoration project in Ohio. This, these pieces are in the United States. Uh, this is how I start, you know, roughing out the, the wood. Uh, and then this is the side. Um, you know, now it is more progress. So, and this is the final piece. So I carved two of them. Uh, too much like the 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 restoration project that it was that I have to follow from pictures, uh, um, basically making a replica and, and and try to make like similar faces both of them. Um, this is also for a private client uh, in in Pittsburgh. Um, it took me around um, eight months, I think, eight to nine months to be done, and it's made in walnut. Um, everything is from scratch, and and um, and the the client asked me because he had one idea of uh, what he wants for his uh, billiard room. So uh, and I I came with this design, and he he approved it, and then we. And I did it. Um, and this is the final piece installed for for that billiard room. And the Puchka project. Uh, I wanted something to to do rather than just carving. Uh, not just, but rather than carving uh, like classical or ornamental pieces. So then I come with this new project, which is called Puchka. And Puchka means in Quechua, uh, spinning wool. It's like the action of spinning uh, wool. But in this case, it's like related with my own um, uh, journey as an artist that moves from a different, from a different country and I try to find uh, my own language. So how to translate those different experiences into my own body of work. So I came with this Puchka project because every thread that I am spinning into the wool, it's, it's my own experiences that I am having uh, since a kid, since I'm a kid, but also uh, having those experiences here in the United States. So I came with this new um, concept of what to do with, with my ideas of producing new pieces. This work is um, uh, in Graz, Austria, when I was invited to the, in the two, 2019 uh, for the World Wood Day celebration. And, um, and I think it was the starting point where I started to love like large scale sculptural pieces. 
because I learn a lot with uh, other carvers from different parts of the world, even if we were not speaking the same language, but we have something in common that we were carving, we love carving and, and doing sculptures. So, for example, working with a, with a person who was from, uh, I think, Iraq, and another artist who was from Thailand, and we didn't have the particular language, but we were put it together in the, in the singular piece. And then we came with a design, of course, sometimes it was tough to, to be agree uh, what we want to design, but at the end of the day, we just, uh, yeah, it was <laughs> an excellent result. This is a um, uh, public art that I did in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. I was hired uh, for, the, for this commission. Um, basically, this um, uh, maple tree uh, was damaged in a storm, but uh, the neighborhood, they didn't want just to take down this uh, tree trunk. So they hire, oh, they called for artists, regional artists, and then I was uh, selected, and I came with this, with this design. And uh, I remember I was talking with um, uh, with the residents today. Um, I don't remember who, and I was, we were talking about design, how the design sometimes in a in a you know in a paper doesn't reflect what or how is going to evolve and in a sculptural piece because it is a three-dimensional object, a three-dimensional item that you have just to follow your instant. But at the same time, what is instant? If instant is basically comes with practice. So I have the, you know, the whole idea what, uh, what I was ambitioning, just seeing the, the design and I came with this. Uh, I started with a chainsaw, rough it out, and I also use a lot of grinders. Uh, that this was during uh, COVID uh, 2020, I think, and this is the final piece. Also integrating different other like um, you know um, um, uh, textures that is coming out from the you know from the surface, of the wood. And this uh, uh, this sculpture is called uh, together. Uh, it also is inspired by uh, wooden uh, uh, threads uh, that is um, um, that I carved from uh, from pieces of uh, catalpa tree, and uh, those those are like huge tree trunks, and um, this was the installation during the installation process, and I darken it with, uh, um, with fire, just firing, and, and applying some finish. And yeah, this is the together a sculptural piece. And it took me um, uh, approximately uh, maybe two months to be done like one, like maybe two weeks, like roughing out with a chainsaw and grinders, and then the um, one month and a half by by hand with the gouges. Um, there are many like stories in the Peruvian Andes. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember uh, my parents and people talking about. Uh, um, uh, this uh, supernatural animal or whatever it was, they call anas. And supposed to be when you smell anas, uh, or when you smell when ha when it's 
passing años through the neighborhood, if if you smell like its sense like during three consecutive days, it's possible that somebody in the family will die. <laughs> so um, I grew up with, with that imagine of this supernatural animal, what it was. What exactly was this animal? Or where it came from, this species of thing? So when I grew up, Maybe I was, I don't know, 16, 17. I learned that Anyas was skunk. <laughs> Anyas was a skunk. And, but always I was like imagining how is this animal, how is this supernatural thing that is flowing in the air? Does it have feet? Does it have wings? What it is exactly? So I was always like dreaming, trying to draw as a kid what it was, but always amazed, but at the same time scared of what it was this thing. So that is why I came with this unknown um, body, unknown uh, species of, I don't know, from nowhere. Uh, with this idea of mixing uh, walnut and um, and um, uh, I think it is uh, maple and red clay and uh, and yeah, so that is Anya's this animal that was scary to me when I was a kid. Um, those two are also part of the Puchka project. Uh, this one is uh, called uh, Nina Uru. Um, uh, last year I, w I brought here um, um, and, and somebody get it during the action. <laughs> uh, it's made in um, ash wood and darkened with um, um, with a candle and and then finished it's it's an interesting uh, technique that i I learned when I was uh, um, uh, working in peru and and I think I like it and this is in mahogany and uh, it is also similar to this and and uh, the ridges are created also with the uh, hand carving tools, uh, gouges, and it's basically like uh, talking about seeds, talking about the life, the, talking about like growing things that it's uh, changing all the time. Um, I also want to talk about connections. Um, this um, sculptural piece was commissioned by the um, Allegheny County Airport Authority as part of the terminal modernization program. And, um, and, and yeah, I'm pretty happy about this uh, uh, big project that is just happening. I'm still in the process of uh, shaping the wood uh, uh, in my studio. But this is uh, basically uh, like the, the model, how it is going to be, uh, and the size that how it's expected to be. And this is also talking about um, connections. Connection, I, I chose that, I, that um, uh, concept of connections because what it means, uh, you know, the airport. The airport is it's, it's a place of connections, a place of where, uh, you know, you are uh, arriving, but at the same time, it's a place where you are going uh, everywhere. And sometimes, you know, when you think, uh, um, how when people migrate, what they are thinking with them in the bag in their baggage you know they are they are taking with them everything they are taking they, they are taking with them their whole experience with them so um that is why i came with this idea of connections uh, because it connects with 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 me with my past and also with my future that uh, every person also is a uh, going into it and um and this is the other uh uh pieces that is going to be in the uh, carousel baggage claim area on top of it 
So um, the sizes, uh, as you could see, the measurements are, are this, six feet high, three feet in depth, and six uh, feet uh, uh, wide. So, um, and I'm intending it to do, to carve this uh, from a solid piece of wood and, and, and gluing maybe these parts that are coming out from the, from the whole body. And what it refers to me, these two pieces, it's like they are like interacting each other, like making a connection, like, you know, exchanging experiences, uh, talking about something else that who knows what they are, you know, talking about. And, and also it's like a duality between, you know, those two different opposite colors. And at the same time, they are, they are, they come from the same place and, also from different places too. This is also for the same uh, project, uh, and uh, and I love uh, also the idea of um, these pieces are inviting to be to be touched. So my whole idea is also it make uh, it, this is uh, pretty tactile and, uh, um, but at the same time they also talk about. Uh, the growing, the seeds, the changing of life. Um, this is the final piece that uh, uh, um, I'm going to create uh, these uh, petals of flowers, uh, like cutting from a, a veneer, like approximately maybe 2,000 different uh, petals from uh, veneer, uh, maybe mahogany uh, or maybe uh, walnut. I'm still debating uh, that part, but it's going to be hanging this piece from from the like this. So this is what uh, we are expecting it to be. And uh, this is the final piece for this project. Uh, this is basically a bench that it, it is like, um, um, it's like a type of bridge that it connects uh, the sculpture that is, uh, you know, located in the, in the baggage claim area that, of course, people, you know, the, the, the um, public cannot touch. But the whole idea is to make these benches to be seated, to be interacted with the people. In that way, you know, the, the, the public also are part of the sculpture when they are sitting and they are interacting, but, but they also are touching them. And this is also the, the same piece, but from a different, uh, from the different side of it. So it's going to be like um, different, uh, uh, yeah, different type of textures. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Could you please, uh, yeah, I didn't hear.
Uh, for example, uh, when I was in Peru, I never did like sculptural pieces like like that type. So when I arrived into United States, I was debating. Uh, um, I'm not sure if some of you had been, you know, when you were doing your art, uh, when you were like established artist in your country and moved to a different place, totally different cultural language and everything. It's like a shock. It's like that happened with me. So um, I didn't know what exactly to paint. I didn't know exactly what to create because I knew this is not a place where I was born. This is not a place where I was attached. There was nothing that relates me with, with this country when I arrived. So. It was difficult for me. This is still difficult for me to try to do some painting that I did in Peru. So what it shift, I have to come with this idea of the puchka, you know, the spinning thing that we were doing at home because we loved to do that when we were kids in the family because that was time of story times at home and just remembering those moments and thinking Puchka as a sculptural piece, but at the same time, like combining those strengths with my own experience, I think that's what it changed. So I have to change not just the, my media as a painter, but also as a sculptor. So that's why I'm, I said I never did sculpture in Peru, but now it's where I'm starting as a new myself to express. Hi, Freddie. Thank you so much um, for your wonderful talk. I have a question. You, t you, you began the talk kind of about your exploration of death, and I also think a lot of your work speaks about hidden experience. And I'm just curious how maybe that universal experience comes into your work. And, and can you talk a little bit about, more about how that might be coming into the carved pieces or if any of that kind of explores that same experience? Um, could you ask me? No, no. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You talked about sort of the universal experience of death, and you started out with the images. I'm wondering if that comes into your sculpture at all. Yeah, it comes. It comes because um, I think every, every piece now that I do, it's, it's related always with those experiences. Uh, it, I mean, I cannot disattached, it's a word, with those experiences because it's it's here and always you know as now for example in Peru it's happening uh, like uh, socio political issues um, it brings me again to you know those nightmares that I had been living as a kid uh, and it's the same it's the same repetition of those experiences and and I'm and I'm sure that I will be coming uh, I hope coming back into um, this media of painting to produce new pieces that will reattach me to those feelings. Hi, Freddie. You talked about having children, and could you talk a little bit how that had impacted? your artwork or your view on life? Uh, having my two <laughs> beautiful girls. Um, I think this duality of death and life, I think that was a pretty, it, it is a pretty important like, language in, in many artists. And in my case, it's the same. Uh, for example, as you could, uh, uh, as you saw on the, um, 
uh, seeds. You know, there is a lot of reference to born to seeds. You know, what means seeds? You know, it's it's the growing, it's the new hope of the new uh, experience of for those who are coming, for those who already came. So um, it also makes me feel like it's important to think about like those issues about kids, about those uh, the seeds, but at the same time, the duality of what is happening, you know, with people who are killed. The day when we were uh, when we were living in Peru um, in December, where everything started in my city, and I think the next two days. Um, the army came and they killed 10 people in just one day because they were protesting. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's like a flashback. Yeah. Freddie, I have one question for you, um, more about your practice. Um, you do a lot of stuff for like restoration and commissions, and then you also do a lot of personal stuff like your Puchka pieces. Um, do you find you enjoy the variety of making stuff with your own ideas and collaborating with others? It's, it's a total different experience. Each project, it's, it's unique. Uh, like for example, commissions for um, patrons who want like pretty ornate uh, carving pieces. It's enjoyable because it's a, it's a challenge. <laughs> it's every piece is a challenge and every piece is unique. And I don't I don't do like twice the same piece. And at the same time, like the sculptural pieces are are it's a different body. It's it's more like feeling different because also you approach it different to those pieces. It's uh, you are giving a different energy to them. Uh, what also I enjoy a lot is teaching. I think teaching is it's it's a different uh, way of learning from students all the time that it make me feel like there are still things that I have to learn from everyone. But yeah, they are uh, totally different, but at the same time all enjoyable during the process.